What's good, BitRushers? My name's Kyler, and this is BitRush Crypto. Today's video is going to be part four of a several part series on creating your own 10,000 piece generative NFT project. Today we're going to be going over the actual storage portion, how to host all of your images and your metadata on the blockchain using IPFS. So if that all sounds good, do stick around. Before we get into the content, let's smash that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Here we go. Okay guys, so come on over to pinata.cloud. This is what we're going to be using for our IPFS storage. There are other options out there. However, this one is free for a small amount, which is enough to do most basic projects. If you do have more advanced needs or you just want to make sure you have the top notch, it's not that much to upgrade to you know, their highest level either. So I'll leave that up to you guys, depending on your budget and what you want to do. But for today's video, we will be accomplishing everything we need in this basic tutorial using the free account. So we're just going to come over to, again, pinata.cloud and sign up for a free account here. You can see the different price levels. As I mentioned, $20 a month isn't much if you want that pro plan. Um, and then the free plan is zero, or you could do a per gigabyte per month, which is also another great option. If you want to just follow along, go ahead and use the for free. Next, you can see all the information here. You need to fill out your first name, last name, email, password, confirm your password, and then put if you're a builder or a creator. Um, basically, for mine, I'm just going to leave it at creator. I'll let you guys fill out all that information, set up your account, and I'll see you in the next step. Next, you're going to need to just go to your email and find a confirmation code that they've sent and enter that code here to confirm that you are, in fact, the owner of that email address. Next, you're gonna be greeted with the screen that looks like this. It says, hey, and it has your files, the gateway, all this kind of stuff here. Um, ours is going to be completely empty. So if you want to set individual files, you could upload individual files here by clicking upload and do file and just upload an image or a JSON file. However, the way that we're gonna do it and the way that our smart contract is built, so if you're following along this tutorial, you're gonna to wanna to do it the same way, is to upload an entire folder that contains every single image that you're using for your NFTs and another folder that contains every single JSON file for the metadata on all of your NFTs. And this way we're just setting that IPFS base, the root URL, and then it automatically adds one through, you know, however many you have up to about 10,000 if that's what you're doing or however many you have set in your smart contract. So the next thing you're going to need to do then is to basically set up a folder that has all of the images you'd like to use for your NFTs and have them labeled one through whatever number is your max if you're setting it up and using the smart contract in the way that we are in this tutorial series. Just to keep things nice and simple, I'm going to update an example of the smashed pumpkin that we used for the Crypto Pumpkins project. I do have a folder in downloads and it's just called smashed. And then within that folder, I have an image that is labeled just one, um, one dot PNG is the name of it. So that's what you want to do. Again, if you had 10,000 images, you'd want them numbered one through 10. And the way you guys can get that, if you don't know, is go back to the very first video in this series. And I'll teach you how to do that in the art generator using node.js and visual studio code. We're also going to be using that software a little bit later in the video to update our metadata in the next step. So I show you guys that as well. But for right now, make sure you have your folder set. Again, I'm using just as an example with only one image. So back at Pinata, we're going to do upload folder and we're going to select our folder. Once you're inside of that folder, you're not going to see any of those images because this is only selecting folders. So just verify that path ahead of time so you can see that it is correct. Download smashed and the folder name is smashed. So let's click upload. And then it's going to ask you for a name. Make sure you name it something that you're going to recognize later on so you don't need to just kind of guess what's in this folder. 
I'm going to use a descriptive name like image smash so you guys can choose whatever you want. This is just for your own personal use and when you're ready go ahead and click upload. It'll take a couple seconds depending on how much stuff you have in there and once you're done you can see that we now have a folder that is labeled and we also have our CID. This is essentially going to be the URL that you would use as your IPFS address. We can see the eyeball right here so if we click on that it's going to allow us to view what's in that folder. We can see this is an index of that folder and since we only have one image we can click on one.png and we can now see that image and we also have the unique uh, URL for that right here. And so it's going to be everything after the IPFS slash is what the address would be. And so it's this long um, you know, hex address and then one.png. So that all looks good, very good. You can verify all of them if you're doing 10,000. Um, you may not need to do all 10,000, but just check a couple of them and make sure they're there. Next, coming back to your dashboard, what you're going to need for the next step is the actual CID address right here for the entire folder. So for this folder, the address is going to be here. If we just click that, it does copy it to our clipboard. The next step is going to be open up our Visual Studio code and replace the old address in our metadata files with the new address that points to the image. Okay, so again, back in Visual Studio code, we've opened up that folder that we were using to create those randomly generated images and JSON data. If you don't have that, go back and watch that first video. I'll teach you how to do that. Should be popping up above now and linked in the description and maybe at the end of the video as well. Um, but you can see right here in every single one, it says um, new URI to replace. Okay, so essentially we need to replace that with that um, URI that we just copied from our last step from the pinata folder. There is a way that you can do this automatically built in with the utilities on the generator built by Hashlips. However, I want to show you guys another easy way you could do it in case you're using a different method and you're not using this art generator. So you could do it both ways, but there is another option that you just go to edit and then find in files. And since I have it copied already, it's going to find in the files every single instance of that. The next thing you wanna do, nice and easy, is we can just paste in, in that address that we've copied from the previous step. So now if we click this button right here, it's going to find and replace every instance of new URI to replace within this folder that we are in, which should be every single instance that we need to replace. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and it's gonna ask you to replace all 1300 across 667 files, so go ahead and hit replace. There we go, we can see that that did replace in our file that we're opened here, one.json. The next thing you need to do is just file save all, and that is control KS. Okay, so back at Pinata, we're now going to click upload folder once again. We're gonna select the folder we'd like to upload. If you're following along using the same tutorial, it should be in build and then JSON. Again, make sure you name it something that you'll remember. I'm going to just call mine Meta Smashed. We'll take a second for everything to upload. Very good, and now we can see that folder called Meta Smashed, and we have a new URI for that, the CID, but let's go ahead and click into Meta Smashed. Let's just check the first one, one.json. Clicking into that metadata file, we can now see that it has correctly been replaced with the address from our image folder, and that should be the same as the address that we saw before, the slash one.png. Very good, we have completed this step. The final step is going to be upload the URI of the metadata to our smart contract. If you haven't deployed your smart contract yet, you can use this to be the address that you're going to deploy at. It would be IPFS colon forward slash forward slash. Then you'd paste in this address that you've copied and add a trailing slash. 
If you guys have already uploaded and you're now looking to do the post reveal, I'm gonna just quickly show you how you would accomplish that now. Okay, so we're gonna to want to come to Etherscan and find our contract for our NFT. And coming down here, we can click on Pumpkin Patch. And from here, we can scroll down again and go to Contract. And from here, we're able to read and write. So just as an example, um, under the read contract, if we go to base URI, it's going to give us what that address is right here, IPFS forward slash, and it looks just like the string that we've created, just a little bit different address. Okay, so if we want to change that, what we need to do is basically the same thing. We're gonna to go to write contract. We're gonna to connect to Web3 to connect to our MetaMask wallet. Once you're connected, and obviously guys, you have to actually be the wallet address that deployed the contract or has permissions to write on the address, so this isn't gonna work. Um, but we can come down to set base URI. And again, we're gonna just type that in. The IPFS colon forward slash forward slash. And then coming back to Pinata, we can take that metadata folder here, click the copy. Clicking back over, we can paste in. Control V will paste or right click, and then we wanna add that trailing slash. Um, that's how you have to do it using this smart contract. And if that all looks good, we're gonna click right, and it will open up a confirmation here in MetaMask. We'll confirm that we wanna pay the gas fee, and it will take a few minutes to confirm the transaction. I don't wanna actually do this on my contract, so I'm not gonna do that now, but that's basically everything you guys need to know about storing your metadata, um, at least the most basic version on IPFS using Pinata Cloud uploading a folder full of images and then taking that URI and replacing it in your um, JSON metadata and creating another folder and uploading that to the cloud as well. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, guys, I do have a full tutorial series I'm working on and trying to get finished as quickly as possible. When I'm done with this one, I'm gonna move on to a Solana series. So if you guys are looking forward to that or any of the other videos in the how to create an NFT smart contract 10,000 pieces series, make sure you guys sub to the channel, smash the thumbs up on this one. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. If so, share it on social media with your friends and family. That's it for today's episode. Happy crypto and let's keep getting that coin.